Greetings and welcome to another Sir Rancelot podcast. Yay. And there was much rejoicing. So here we are, a new year, 2012. A year of what I'm sure are going to be great movies and quite a few really bad ones. Just to let everyone know, this is going to be really, really informal, even for my podcast. I'm just going to go to MovieInsider.com and go over the list of movies, and I'm going to tell you what I think. There's not going to be a top 10 or top 5 or top 7 list for this. I'm just going to go over which movies I'm looking forward to and which movies I'm really dreading. Of course, I'm not going to touch on every single movie that's there, and some movies I might just say one or two words about. So, looking at this list on MovieInsider.com, um, first thing up, coming out this week, is The Devil Inside. I really don't know if I'm going to see that one. Um, the trailers look freaking freaky, I have to say that. Um, but it kind of looks to me like it's something that could be easily hyped up as more than it is. Of course, they're trying to push the whole thing as legitimate, and I don't know if the story is actually true, if those murders did happen... I mean, it says that's the actual phone call that took place. Maybe it was the phone call that took place, and the rest of the stuff is kind of fictional. I'm not a disbeliever in exorcism. But if I do go see this movie, it's not going to be because I want to, like, see what really happened back then, or uh, what the Vatican is hiding, or any of that shit. I'm just going to go and see it because it looks freaky. I mean, who didn't get scared by that whole connect the cuts, connect the cuts thing, and then all of a sudden she screams? I mean, everybody in the theater jumped when I saw it. Well, looking at the list, that's about the only movie that I recognize that's coming out this year. Probably the only movie that I want to see, and I don't even know if I'm going to go see it. Um, uh, here's one movie that I definitely think I'm going to miss. Underworld Awakening. My God. I guess that movie's still making money, but... Okay, first one was enjoyable and everything, but I don't understand why they keep putting out movie after movie about this. Yeah, Kate Beckinsale is hot. <laughs> you know, put her in leather, that's great and everything, but do we really need to spend millions of dollars in CGI special effects and action sequences just to see Kate Beckinsale in leather? And maybe some of you are saying, oh, no, no, it's cool action, I like the story. You know, that's fine by you, me, I'm going to skip it. Looking at February, we have... Journey to the Mysterious Island? Uh, okay, you know what? Journey to the Center of the Earth, if you watch it with the 3D effect, it's probably one of the better 3D movies. You know, everything's 3D now, but that one was actually... It's the closest I felt to, like, those 3D rides at Disney or what have you, where you actually feel like there's shit coming at you, you feel like you're on a ride. Maybe that's what they're doing with the sequel, I don't know. But I haven't really even seen the trailer. All I know is that it's coming out and it's got The Rock in it. So leaves very little impression on me. That's another one that I think I can skip. I don't even need to see it just to review it. Uh, going ahead. Uh, oh, God. Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. And I know there's going to be like a million people showing up in friggin' Darth Maul costumes to see this shit. You know what, I'll admit that when he gets to, like, A New Hope and all that stuff, I might actually go see those, but episode one, fucking forget about it. If he just released, like, the original trilogy in 3D, we'd be fine with that, but no, he's got to milk more money out of it. Ugh, can you believe this shit? Alright, Ghost Rider, uh, sequel to Ghost Rider, which I know nothing about. I guess Nick Cage is back in it. I don't know. I might see that one. I might wait for DVD. I didn't think the first Ghost Rider was all that bad. I mean, it certainly wasn't as good as most superhero movies, but it wasn't as bad as I had heard. So this one, yeah, we'll see. Uh, going ahead to March, Dr. Seuss Lorax. That might be decent. Um, what else we got here? John Carter. Pfft, fuck that shit. 21 Jump Street? Give me a fucking break. And uh, which one was it that really... Oh, Wrath of the Titans! What the fuck, people? Oh, Clash of the Titans sucked! What the fuck are you doing? The first movie was nothing about a bunch of guys like walking around going, someone has to take a stand, someone has to take a stand, which made like Perseus no better than anyone else out there. And the CGI effects? Give me a fucking break. So we're going to get more of that. And are we going to get the same kind of anticlimactic battle that we had at the end of Clash of the Titans? If you read my review, my text review of Clash of the Titans, you know what I'm talking about. Like, all this build-up to Hades, and he's friggin' zapped in one strike from Perseus. 
Motherfucker. I can't believe we're doing that shit again. Alright, what else we got? Uh, let's see, April. Uh, three Suges. Hmm. Don't know enough about it yet. Scary Movie 5? Oh, come on. This movie needs to die. The first one was funny. Now it's lost its effect. But now, some really good news. May 4th, The Avengers, people. Let's hear the applause for that one. That is going to kick ass, and we all know it. Yet again, I can see where some people might be a little hesitant because all these movies like Iron Man 2, Thor, Captain America really built this movie up, so... If they really fail with this one, if they drop the ball, there's going to be a lot of pissed off people. The thing I'm really hoping for this one is that they don't forget the whole plot line of Captain America where he was supposed to have that date with Peggy and now she's gone. Like, I really hope they follow up with that. I really hope that they have some scenes where he's trying to adjust to this new world and Hopefully a couple scenes where he's looking at her picture in the locket. Doesn't he have a locket of her? I don't know. But he's probably got to have some kind of photograph of her. And, and I hope that you see scenes of him doing that and dealing with the fact that this woman has died. And I really hope that she is actually dead, that they don't like bring back like an 80-year-old or 90-year-old version of... Well, how old would she have to be? Um, Yugo and I talked about this for a while, I, but I forgot. But definitely it's not the only thing I'm looking forward to, you know... Iron Man, he kicks ass. I'm interested to see what the hell Bullseye is going to be about, because he was built up, but he wasn't given any kind of movie, so he could be really cool, or maybe a letdown. We'll have to see. Oops, did I call him Bullseye? Uh, I, I meant uh, Hawkeye, sorry. <laughs> now I'm getting my Marvel characters confused. How the Hulk ties into this? That could be kind of interesting, too. I don't know how they're going about that. I, I have to confess, I haven't seen the whole Incredible Hulk movie, some people are saying that I have to, and how can I be a superhero fan without seeing that one? Haven't seen it yet, I guess I gotta check that one out. But The Avengers, if I were making a list of my top 10 most anticipated movies of the year, that would be pretty damn high up there. Along with The Dark Knight Rises, which I'm sure is gonna kick ass. But I'm not really gonna talk about it, because if you wanna hear me talk about The Dark Knight movie, click on any of my Batman reviews. In fact, not long ago, I posted a review about Sherlock Holmes and the trailer that we saw beforehand. But getting back to the other movies, Battleship, pff, who's going to see that piece of shit movie? Oh, and if we want to talk about another shitty movie, Jack the Giant Killer. That movie was like such a piece of my childhood. I watched it as a kid, and I loved it as a kid, and now looking back on it, I appreciate it for all the cheese factor. It's stupid. The effects are stupid, but I love it. It's got like this charm about it that's just so hilarious to watch. I missed live riff tracks this year. They did a live riff of that movie, and I missed it, unfortunately. I have to wait for DVD. So, Jack the Giant Killer, really just not looking forward to that for the reason I stated. And I don't even know anything about the movie, so that is a really biased opinion. I admit that. G.I. Joe Retaliation. Pfft. The first G.I. Joe movie sucked, okay? Unless they're going to put Cobra in this thing, like Cobra Commander, if he's actually going to show up, then I might see this movie. But other than that, fuck it. Uh, July 3rd, The Amazing Spider-Man. Definitely looking forward to that one, although I have a lot of hesitation. Like everyone else, I don't really see the need to go back into Spider-Man's origin story. It hasn't been that long. The first origin story was done really well. And also, I'm kind of confused because I read some time ago, Avi Arad said that this is still kind of within the continuity, but not really. So is this kind of like a before Spider-Man 1 type thing, his early years of being Spider-Man? Then is Mary Jane going to show up? Because, I mean, he was... How are you going to do a romance with Gwen Stacy? Because in the first one, it was always like, Oh, Mary Jane! Always Mary Jane! Ever since I was a kid! I'm sorry, I'm, I'm really not all enthralled with the whole Peter Parker, Mary Jane romance. I liked it in the first one, but they really made more of that than they needed to. But this movie, getting back to it, a remake, not really necessary, and even, I'll be one of the first to say that I don't need the guy to invent the web shooters. I'm perfectly fine with that being one of his superpowers. I know a lot of people are looking forward to that, like, so he can run out of the web jail and then not be able to use the web shooters. Which I understand, and again, I'm probably the only person that feels this way, but to me, with Spider-Man, he's already got superpowers. So, why not give him web gel that comes out of his hands? 
Oh, it's not realistic. It's a fucking superhero movie, okay? How much realism do you really expect? That said, I know I'm ranting about that whole web shooter thing for a while, but that's not going to ruin this movie. All I'm saying is I'm not super excited about this movie just because he's got web shooters that he builds instead of coming right out of his hands. The other thing that I'm really not looking forward to in this one is Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy. Don't get me wrong, Emma Stone is a great actress, but the roles that she tends to play... Gwen Stacy, to me, is like a really sweet and innocent and pure person, and there's nothing innocent about Emma Stone to me, all right? Not saying anything about the person, because I don't know her as a person in real life, but with the characters she's played... I'm just not seeing Gwen Stacy, and as a blonde, eh, you know, and she looks best as a, a brunette and a redhead. Something about the blonde hair just doesn't seem right to me. So if I'm bitching a lot about the things that <laughs> I'm not looking forward to this movie, you may be wondering, why am I saying this is something that I'm looking forward to? You know what? The style of the movie is a little bit more nitty-gritty, at least it seems so from the trailers and from the images. I'm glad that they're going to be getting rid of all the cute shit. Too much of, like, Tobey Maguire trying to be cute, and... I like the comedy, but I think they got carried away with it after a while. I'm sure there'll be comedy in this, but it looks like the tone is a lot more serious. It's grittier, and I'm not saying that's the way Spider-Man should be, but I'm curious to see what that looks like. So what else we got here? Born Legacy? Hey, that sounds pretty cool. Probably go see that one. <laughs> I, I know that's bad for me to say, oh, I'm gonna go see this movie and not really give any reasons why, but, you know, the Born movies are pretty friggin' awesome, so I kinda gotta go see that. My family will probably see it, too. Uh, Resident Evil Retribution. Fuck me! Ah! Sorry, sorry. But really, those movies have gotten so bad. So bad. Did you see my really short review of Resident Evil Extinction? Apparently, that's one of my more popular text reviews on my site, where I just said, basically... God, this movie sucks. Stop these movies. Or so many reboot them and do them right, because I always felt the Resident Evil movies would make really good movies if they followed the games. But they haven't, and now they're kind of trying to bring it back to that. The last one was just ridiculous with how they try to tie in Resident Evil 5 with the events of Resident Evil Extinction, and I'm guessing that they didn't reboot this one, that they're kind of going with the sequel that was promised at the tag of... Uh, of the last movie. Oh, you know what? I probably will see this. I probably will see it just to write a review of it and tell you just how much it pisses me off. But seriously, somebody out there, I've seen a lot of good independent films adapted from video games. Somebody adapt Resident Evil. You can do it. I have faith in you. I'll write the script myself. I got a lot of projects going on, but if there's somebody out there who can make a legitimate, independent Resident Evil movie, I will write the script. I will help you make it. I wanted that friggin' bird. I'm sick of this friggin' love letter to Mila Jovovich. Fuck me. Ugh. I'm really sorry about that, and I realize that I've been ranting about some of these movies. I've been wasting a lot of time, so if you're still listening, I really appreciate it. Because now, as I see this video approaching the 1340 mark. I'm going to have to put the rest of this on part two, so if I haven't lost you completely, join me in part two, all right? Thanks for listening.